Well, good afternoon, everyone, and sorry for the delay. Tim will went on longer than expected. I'm delighted to be joined today by our Minister for Enterprise. He would like to update you on the latest schemes being launched and the fantastic work we are seeing from local businesses navigating these difficult times. Before I do so, I would like to go through the statistics as of 4pm today. Total tests undertaken, 1,129. Total results received, 913. Number of tests sent today, 54. Total confirmed cases, 60. Total confirmed new cases since 10am this morning, nil. Number of current hospital admissions, 3. As you can see, we have been able to significantly increase our rate of testing. This is a tribute to our wonderful teams doing the testing at the Mobile Testing Centre and let's not forget, through home visits to those who cannot make it to the testing centre. As the Health and Social Care Minister has done in his updates, I can confirm that two of the three people who are receiving care in hospital are the same people that we told you about in previous briefings. The third person was admitted today. For reasons of patient confidentiality, you will understand that I cannot say more than this. Testing will continue to be a priority for us. I chaired a meeting of our National Strategy Group this morning and was encouraged to hear that our on-island testing facility is still on course to be up and running in a couple of weeks. This, like so much at the moment, has been a great team effort and I know the Health and Social Care Minister will be keen to update you on this soon. But today I would like to focus our briefing on what we are doing to support our businesses and our workforce. Yesterday we heard from the Treasury Minister about the work he and his team are doing. The Department of Enterprise played an important role in this. Also, listening to our industries on the island and informing the Treasury's work, and I am grateful for the Department of Enterprise team. I'll now hand over to Minister Skelly to give you an update. Thank you, Lawrence. Pastor Mai, good afternoon. Resilience is a word we use quite a lot in the business community and the Isle of Man. We talk about the resilience of our infrastructure, our products and services, and our ability to respond quickly and effectively to changes beyond our control. We have a long and proud history of demonstrating this strength and keen ability to adapt and survive, and yet never before have I seen the island's resilience put to a test as such as now. Since the onset of this pandemic, I have seen a robust economy and thriving business community face a series of extraordinary challenges. And yet, we are still finding wonderful examples of strength and resilience. We are finding it in the evolution of business models, the acceptance of new ways of working, the challenge of make and do with less, and the dedication of our employees in the face of unprecedented change. We have seen businesses embrace social distancing. Our much valued local retailers have worked together to adapt their services to provide necessary queue management and distance requirements, while also establishing new practices and special time slots to help the island's most vulnerable people. Local digital company Dot Performance have not only adapted their entire workforce to work from home, they have also offered numerous projects and ways of helping government with their unique technology. I have been astounded by the speed and skill of our local hospitality industry with many restaurants and pubs quickly implementing takeaway options, with some putting in place special delivery for the elderly and the vulnerable. We have seen huge swaths of our economy working from home, doing a fantastic job of continuing businesses as usual in an unrecognisable work environment. The vast majority of our finance, professional services, ICT and e-gaming sectors are all predominantly working in this space some companies delivering their services with 99% of their staff at home. We have seen businesses adapt their entire operating models, not only for their survival, but, but to provide important services to our community, 
local company for Nodri have turned their hand from gin production to produce alcohol-based san san hand sanitizer to donate to our health colleagues. Social innovation at its best. Some of our fitness providers have taken to loaning out equipment and running online sessions to keep us all active and healthy during this time. Microgaming have been working with a local catering company to help prepare meals to, for donation for the benefits of needs in the, in the community. We've also seen a number of local businesses come together to support the Manx Solidarity Fund. This includes Barclays, KPMG, Poker Stars, just to name a few, and more joining every day. And all our key utility providers have agreed that no one will be cut off or stranded as a result of losing their job or having reduced income due to this pandemic. Where working from home is simply impossible, we have seen thousands of our workers show real strength and commendable common sense in continuing to deliver essential services for our island. I am very proud of the local manufacturing businesses who have sprung into action to help service the growing demand for medical supplies around the world. Local companies Swagelock, Moynihan's, Janty's, Strix, RLC Group, Cortec and Hanson Ceramics have all been turning their expertise to designing and producing essential medical equipment to fight COVID-19. These are just a few examples of innovation and strength being shown by local companies and workers each and every day. Our businesses have been deeply disrupted by the far-reaching and necessary measures we have implemented as a society. Important sections of our economy have been asked to close and we are doing all we can as a government and a society to enable their survival. The Department for Enterprise and Treasury have been working around the clock to provide essential funding and support for businesses and individuals who are most need of this help. We have already brought into action the Business Adaptation Grant for those companies who wish to evolve their business model during this time. We have temporarily suspended the requirement of a work permit, allowing any resident worker to freely take up alternative employment. And we have continued to deliver a range of schemes through our enterprise support scheme, issue many payments to help ease the financial burden at this time. Today we are launching initial payments for our strategic capacity scheme to bring essential financial support to sectors of strategic importance that have been radically impacted by the, this pandemic. The scheme is initially open to those operating in the tourism accommodation sector to help them put their fares in order and keep their business intact during this extended period of no income. We recognise that recovery will take a long time for this industry. With consumer confidence and booking lead time set to return gradually once the pandemic is firmly under control. We will continue to review and consider providing further support in future. As Minister Cannon said yesterday, we are in a fight to save lives, but we are also in a fight to protect our economy and save jobs. We recently launched the, the, the uh, business support scheme to give direct grant support to some of the most effective areas. Since the launch, the scheme has received over 1,000 applications from businesses in need of emergency funding and processed over 400 so far. Through close collaboration with industry and treasury, we have modified the scheme over the last couple of weeks to make it more accessible to some of our hardest hit sectors. We have also continued to work with the Islands Bank, all the banks, to clear, uh, give clear guidelines around the new Isle of Man Disruption Loan Guarantee Scheme. The scheme has been introduced in, in response to the financial challenges facing local businesses as a result of this pandemic. And we will see the Ireland's Commercial Bank supporting up to £60 million of new lending, of which 80% will be underwritten by the Isle of Man government. The scheme will be initially implemented by HSBC, Lloyds, Barclays, Isle of Man Bank and Coniston Bank, who are continually supporting the local community and their customers. More broadly, the resilience of the island's infrastructure has been tested. Our suppliers have been working exceptionally hard to ensure that much needed food, medicine and necessities continue to reach our island. I am grateful to our logistic suppliers. 
our transport partners and our retailers. And as Andrew Corry said yesterday from the Manx Co-op, these employees now become true frontline services for us all. We have all been profoundly affected. We will all be forever changed and we will remain firmly open as a government and engage and as a community. Never before has the Manx motto rang true. Kukunku, Jocera, Stabbard, whichever way thrown, we will stand. We are Manx, we are proud, we are innovative and we are resilient. Good am I. I'll now pass it back to Chief Minister. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much, Lawrence, and I'm grateful to all those involved from our industry bodies. We know this is already a tough time for many, and as I've said before, I have no magic wand for the economy, but the Council of Ministers is united in its commitment to do everything it can. I would like to conclude by thanking everyone who has sent in details of hashtag Howard's Heroes of people and organisations who have been going the extra mile. Now, Jake Sansbury on Twitter did make the point that everyone on the Isle of Man is going the extra mile, and this is an absolutely fair point. It got me thinking. This pandemic has changed everyone's life. There is a moment of national unity. It might feel like there can be no happy ending to this story. As I've said on numerous occasions, we have a long journey ahead of us, and we need to face the fact that we will certainly lose lives to this horrid virus. But there will be an end, and working together as a nation is how we will get there. I am proud of what I've seen so far. Please keep it up. The point of Howard's Heroes was not to say that anyone else's contribution was better than everyone else's. I did want you all to see some of the incredible selfless acts, many of which slip under the radar. There have been dozens of amazing examples. There will be many more shout-outs over the coming days. But three that have caught my eye today have been Ramsey Rugby Club. Now, as a Peel and Western Vikings player back in the day, it doesn't come easy for me to praise Ramsey Rugby Club. But joking apart, they deserve a shout-out. The club is providing help, including the shopping for those self-isolating, Help, helping people and helping people stay at home. So thank you, well done Ramsey Rugby Club. I would also like to give a shout out to our bus drivers and the team that supports them. They are maintaining an important network, enabling our key workers to do what they need to do. And last but not least, I would like to say a big thank you to nine-year-old Chloe Rollett for putting together care package, packages for her neighbours who most needed it. One group of people that are incredibly important to our island are our food producers. We have invited some of them to talk tomorrow to you about how they continue to provide our essentials. The Enterprise Minister and myself will now take questions. And first, I think, is Chris from Energy FM. Chris. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the bus drivers um, because I have a question uh, regarding public transport. Will it be placed on a revised schedule or receive any additional support to combat the low passenger numbers at the moment? Well, I think if you read on the website, it does clearly state that we are re running a reduced service. So um, that's what people need to see, the, the reduced service, because you're quite right, Chris, the numbers of people using it have significantly reduced for obvious reasons. If the team at DOI feel the need to amend that further, then of course that's something we will take to you all. But if you go onto the website at the moment, you will be able to see the fact that they are running a reduced service. Uh, the number of cases has now gone past 50, with 11 positive tests coming back today alone. How will preventative measures be increased should we see a sharp rise in the number of confirmed cases on the island? Well, really, that's up to the medics. We, we take medical advice on, on the way forward. A number of the decisions, whilst it's myself and the Council of Ministers that have made the decisions, supported by Timbald, it is based on sound medical advice. So if the medics feel that further actions are needed to be taken, then we will, of course, listen. But at this moment in time, um, I'm not overly concerned that we've had an increase to today. Um, it's, it's to be expected. Let's see what it's like in a week or two's time. 
Next, thank you. Next, thank you very much, Chris. Next, we have Leanne from 3FM. Good afternoon, Leanne. Hi, Hi Chief Minister. I hope you're well. My first question, um, it would ideally be to the Health Minister, but I know he's not talking today, so I'm not sure if you know the answer, but I'll ask anyway. Um, I'd like to know how does someone find out if they've recovered from coronavirus? Are they tested again to find out if the results come back negative? Yes, well, well, what I'm led to believe, and, and obviously the health minister isn't here today, we've got to give him a, a day off too, um, is that all people are now being texted with the, with the results of whether they're negative or, or positive. If that's any, any different in any way, shape or form, I will see that I think Minister Boot is going to be here tomorrow to give an update and I'll see that he gets that in his um, briefing to you all. OK, and secondly, we've had quite a few queries from the general public about university students and the assistance for them. Obviously, studies are cancelled for the time being, but some people are wondering how parents or students are going to pay tuition or rent if they're unable to work. Well, I know that's something that the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture, Dr Allenson, is looking at um, with, with his team. I, I, I know an awful lot of parents, myself included, um, have children back that um, aren't in accommodation, aren't getting any, any lectures, and this may not happen for the, for the next term going to the summer holidays. So obviously the Department of Education, Sport and Culture behind the scenes will be having discussions with the universities to ensure that we can get the best deal we can for our students. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Leanne. Um, Paul, MTTV. Hello, Chief Minister. Hi, Paul. Um, we've got this uh, item out on the, the Tim website saying that, that, that everything's being done to safeguard parliamentary democracy by presiding officers at Timwalt. But ha am I not right in saying that you, besides obviously the last few sittings have been without the press gallery, uh, sorry, the public gallery open, but we've had the press there and there's been an audio feed, you're going to go virtual later this week and will we be able to hear will the public be able to know what you are talking about if it does go that way well absolutely paul i mean i, I cannot speak for the president of timwell the council of ministers don't dictate to timwell office how they do it but i would be highly surprised if the people of the isle of man cannot hear what is said during the emergency meetings. I know we're going to have one on Friday. The president of Timwald has, has intimated that there will be a, a virtual reality TV, um, Timwald, but I am pretty confident that the people of the Isle of Man will be able to hear what's said during that Timwald sitting and going forward. It's important that people have the opportunity to see what their elected members are, are saying, and um, I'm sure the president will help to ensure that happens. The Speaker of the House has just informed me it will be streamed. He's just come through with that information. Um, the other thing is about pharmacies. Uh, uh, there's been a press release out saying new hours have been announced, but I don't know if they're shorter or longer or what's happening. Can you give us more insight into what the pharmacies are doing with their new hours? Is it because of the shortage of medicine, too many people trying to get it or not enough staff or what is it? I'm afraid I can't. That, that's something obviously the health minister would be perfect at handling. Paul, I'm sure it's to do with streamlining the service to make sure that they can give us, with the time they've got and the staff they've got, they can give the very best service to the people of the Isle of Man. Again, I'll ensure that at the next briefing that area is covered. Obviously, the Health Minister can only come to so many, I can only come to so many, and um, if there's crossover, we'll do our best to update you on okay, that. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. And next, we move on to Alex from BBC. Thank you, Chief Minister. Um, a couple of questions for the Enterprise Minister, please. OK. Lawrence. Master Mai, Alex. Master Mai. Uh, you'll be aware there are many small business owners out there who are maybe putting 100 hours a week or more into keeping themselves afloat. They might be aware what help is out there, but not exactly what help is out there. Is the department waiting on their calls or is it proactively engaging with these people who might not be listening to this press conference, bear in mind, proactively engaging to show them their options? Uh, well, what I would say is we're dealing with over a thousand applications already and uh, we have uh, processed 400. So uh, we, we, we are engaging and uh, we strongly recommend that people do make contact with us. Uh, there is, of course, the government website and as a click through for business support. Um, as we're launching more schemes, uh, it, it's important they, they make contact with us so as we can evaluate which particular scheme is the most appropriate for them and their business. And just uh, to add to that, what's the turnaround for a, a grant or a subsidy being made available? Because to some businesses, 
even a week in, they'll be looking at serious cash flow problems. How long does it take for this money to be made available? Well, we're doing it as absolutely as fast as we can, quite obviously. And uh, the fact is, you know, we, we have our teams all working remotely now. And they've been working around the clock with regards to regulations, with these schemes and so forth going to Timwell. Um, so we, we, we're getting through them as quickly as we possibly can. And if there are any exter extenuating circumstances, please let us know and we'll try and prioritise that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lawrence. And if I can just add there, obviously we're going to do as, as quickly as we can to get the support out there to the businesses that need it. But please bear in mind that our, our, our friends in the United Kingdom, we're hearing stories of picking up the phone and being told you're 90,000 in the queue and your slot is 3.30 in the morning. So obviously on the Isle of Man, there's less of us. We'll do our absolute utmost to ensure that doesn't happen to the businesses on the Isle of Man. But please realize that it's not going to be a 24-hour turnaround where you get the payment. It's going to be as soon as we, we humanly can do it. Um, so next we have Jess from Isle of Man Newspapers. Jess. Hello, Chief Minister. Hi, Jess. Uh, <laughs> these are two questions for uh, Minister Skelly, please. Okay. That's my Jess. Hello. Um, so obviously we know that the tourism industry has ha had a huge hit due to coronavirus, but I'm wondering if you can give us a bit of a bigger picture of the scale of impact in terms of cancelled bookings and um, hotel guests being paid back, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, good question. And uh, this is the industry, I think, that was first hit. Um, we, of course, been living through the promenade issue where we've got 70 percent of our hotel bed space on the promenade. So they've been dealing with that. Uh, the flyby issue uh, obviously accelerated. And now, of course, we've had the, uh, the, the coronavirus. So this is an industry that has been severely impacted. But it's also an industry that we would recognize is going to take some time to recover. So today we've uh, launched this uh, capacity, um, strategic capacity scheme to try and aid and support them. Uh, there is, of course, the worker scheme where they can furlong already, which, which, is, uh, which is available to, to them. So now launching this capacity uh, scheme, it allows them to actually make some more informed uh, decisions of how they manage the, the mothballing aspect of, of, their, of their businesses, that being the, uh, the hotels and the self-catering uh, accommodation providers on the island. Thank you. And uh, the second question is, well, you, re you touched upon some industries going through tough times, such as tourism. I'm wondering if you can clarify which industries are particularly struggling um, and how your department is planning on supporting them after this pandemic. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, that. I think the tourism one was the first one that's been hit uh, uh, most significantly and the longest period, I, I would suggest, at this time and likely to be a longer period. So uh, they're, they're really quite unique. Um, but there are it, 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 there's a lot of domestic economy industries the, the the hospitality industry, of course, has been severely impacted as, as well. And we have tried to address, I think, the self-employed, the small business uh, very swiftly by amending some of our schemes to get that support to them. But going forward, uh, we do have one of our schemes, which is really um, repurposing an existing scheme, and that is what we call our adaptation grant. So we've mentioned there with regards to manufacturing uh, businesses who are already uh, repurposing uh, their business to uh, apply themselves towards the uh, medical supply chain. And we've got some great, great stories of those, uh, those businesses uh, here on the Isle of Man being innovative, but we do have support grants for those businesses as they as they go forward so so we're, we're, we're here through the crisis but we're here actually for the recovery as well at the same time hope that's helpful thank you all right pass it back to chief minister thanks very much lawrence for that and next we have tim from manx radio tim best of my chief minister best of my, tim. um it's fantastic, as you say, rightly as well, to see all these manufacturing businesses who have the development of these uh, diving face masks and such ingenuity in a short space of time applied. Um, we've heard garden centres across, and I guess it's the case here, are maybe having to bin many crops they're growing, you know, plants and trees, it is the growing season. It's also the growing season for agriculture. Um, 
and they need help as well. Um, could those plants and trees be transferred to the agricultural sector, to the farmers? And could we see volunteers, maybe students helping out uh, farmers? And uh, of course, they need a bit of rain as well. You may not have noticed with all the meetings you've been in, but it's been very, very dry. Yes, I think the, the forecast for the rest of the week is no rain too, Tim, isn't it? Um, I think we are allowing garden centres to do deliveries on, on, on certain things. So whilst you can't go there to buy, they, they can do a delivery. I mean, obviously, you're going to have Minister Boot and his, um, in, in tomorrow to give an update. That's something I'll certainly pass on to him to see what the, um, you know, the, could that happen. But um, I should imagine an awful lot of what the garden centres are growing aren't going to be much use to to farmers. I'm sure some of my farming friends would love to see a load of um, flowers in their fields, but it's, uh, you know, who knows, there might be some market gardeners who might be able to take up on that offer, Tim, and of course I will um, pass that comment on to uh, Minister Boot and his team to see if there's any uh, elements where we can work together, because we're quite right, we have to think outside the box on this. And uh, finally, uh, it got quite heated in Timwell this afternoon, in fact I think it's the most... Uh, impassioned I've ever heard you in the uh, court there and it was of course over island residents courts overseas do you, do you feel really that you're just caught between the devil and the blue sea or deep blue sea on this one well yes I suppose to an extent Tim I, I do my job as chief minister is to look after the health of everyone on the Isle of Man and save as many lives as possible and that's what I'm doing my utmost with the council of ministers to do and some pretty horrible decisions have had to be made by myself and, and the team that we wouldn't want to make. But when your medics advise you that you must close the borders to save lives, to stop the spread of the coronavirus around the Isle of Man, then I think it would be a very foolish chief minister that didn't listen to them. I listened to what our medics had to say and I took action. I took that action for the 84, nearly 85,000 people that were living on the Isle of Man. Now, of course, my heart goes out to those people who find themselves isolated from the Isle of Man. We've worked with the Foreign Office to ensure that the 80 plus people who are in far flung corners of the world when the UK are doing their flights to repatriate them, then Manx residents will be entitled to get on those flights. So we've been working on this. Council of Ministers is working on a strategy on how we can help those uh, when they do get to the United Kingdom. But at the end of the day, the medical advice is that we cannot have people coming onto the Isle of Man for the time being. Now, as soon as the medics have analysed the spread of the pandemic, on the Isle of Man of coronavirus, then of course we will review that situation and when they advise it's safe that we can bring these people back to the island and maybe put them in um, numerous hotels where they can be safely isolated, of course that's what we want to do. But at the end of the day, I have to look after all the vulnerable people on this island and all of the people on this island and if we allow a, a spike in our outbreak of coronavirus on the island, then our hospital capacity will be breached. We are only a small island of 85,000 residents. We cannot expect to have every type of medical facility on the Isle of Man to cover this sort of emergency. And therefore, it is absolutely paramount that I ensure that where possible, we stop the breach of hospital and medical capacity with this spread. We want a level spread that's below the capacity so we can all come through this together. So whilst I've had to make some really horrible decisions which have caused me not to sleep at night, I genuinely believe that we got the right decision in Timwell today and the vast, vast majority of Timwell members agreed with me. I think there was only two MHKs and an MLC that did disagree with me. Tim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and that's it. Thank you all very much today for, for, for coming. It's been a long day for all of us, I'm sure. But again, my final parting is stay safe, everyone. And thank you for all that you're doing to help reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Thank you very much.